I always forget uh, all of the different things that I've done, so it's nice to be reminded um, that I don't have a life sometimes. But uh, for, for this, uh, for what I'm going to talk about, I'm going to be, if you didn't get from my introduction, I'm going to be talking specifically about the intersection of militarism, um, the arms trade and disability. Um, there is a very obvious route there, which is militarism creates disabled people um, in the most obvious way, but it, it's also that uh, there's quite a few areas of disablement that occur as a result of um, militarization of campuses, militarization of society and the knock-on impacts that have been ever so eloquently talked about already um, by my two other uh, fellow panelists. I'm going to be mentioning the social model in, in, in this sort of opening spiel as it were um, and very quickly um, because the social model itself could be an entire panel debate is the idea of disability being the uh, disabling barriers that a person faces in society rather than it be their impairments. So for example, for myself, I'm a wheelchair user. If things aren't step free, I'm facing a barrier. That's effectively the social model. It's important for talking about disability with the military industrial complex because it is a weaponized uh, status to have uh, as disabilities. So the first area I'd like to talk about is uh, the way in which the medicalized model of or, or burden model that we have in our society in the UK, but have then uh, colonized out to the rest of the world through our history is understanding disabled people as burdens on society. And that has been a, a direct part of how we work within uh, academia and how we work within the medical industrial complex, as well as the military industrial complex, is this view of disabled people being burdens on society. And that is both Inter interconnectedly linked with weaponization um, because that tool of, we're not going to, apologies here, there's going to be some graphic examples to a certain extent, um, but we're not going to kill you. We're going to leave you disfigured, injured, so that you're a burden on the rest of your community. And we've seen that through global imperial actions within all of the uh, uh, wars and uh, military campaigns that have been taken out in the last 20 years specifically this this so-called war on terror is is this idea of weaponizing disability so that it's a so it's a burden that and of itself is is something that is something that universities have to contend with because those same attitudes not only came from academia came from the the last hundred years of eugenics based rhetoric uh, but it also came from the research that's developed. We've been developing more and more in the UK, specifically within our academia, as uh, Mel so eloquently mentioned, which is, you know, more and more remote ways of killing people, more and more remote ways of causing uh, disablement um, to civ civilians in particular. And drones and remote munitions disproportionately impact disabled people, both by creating more disabled people through physical impairments, but also the, the terror, the trauma as a result of having unknown drones flying over your head as a civilian, but also the fact that drones and remote munitions are not as, uh, are, have higher civilian casualties. And this, this sort of leads to the, the second aspect that I'd like to talk about, which is the hypocrisy of rhetoric, which is already been mentioned to a certain extent in, in so, many, so many great ways but when we talk about disability we talk about people almost in silos facing individual stories but we we need to look within the weaponization and the military industrial complex we need to look at how HEIs distance themselves from their their actions what they do so you know a university will do the research will fund via investment portfolios, the military industrial complex, will support graduate recruitments into the armed forces, host cadet social programs, for fun little jaunty activities at the weekend for current students, um, you know, and, and have that social integration on campuses of the military. Um, and then as soon as those impacts have more wider concerns will then distance themselves and dissolve themselves of any responsibility of the disabling impacts that that results from whether it's in the the very short term where those silos of social opportunities on campus develop disabled rhetoric so there's more directed hate to other disabled students because of that silo of we can't take disabled students on these opportunities not that i would want to and not that many of us would want to but that silo of no disabled people to a certain extent in that 
creates a, a, a hate echo chamber of social understanding of disability that is supported by the military industrial complex. It is also the issue that when we have profit for universities profiting from creating disabled people, causing disability, um, killing people and being directly contributing to imperialism and racism, they then don't support disabled people trying to escape from the impacts that they've caused. So whether that is refugees and asylum seekers trying to escape the wars that's being caused and, and funded and equipped by universities, they are then excluded from being able to enter the UK. So those that don't know, there's a medical exemption uh, in the UK's immigration system that if you are classed as a burden on the NHS, you will not be granted any entry. Um, if you're granted asylum or refugee status, there are some exclusions on care that you can receive under the NHS. So there is that additional burden rhetoric that I mentioned at the start that was weaponized and created to a certain extent or caused disability and disablement. And then you can't escape or leave as a result of that um, to then further your life through education, through learning, if you wanted to attend a UK university. F and finally, um, I've spoken for a little bit on quite a few areas of hypocrisy of rhetoric but the one thing I really want to focus on is the true hypocrisy of not supporting um, and not divesting because we will have universities have fully embraced what I like to call the, the straw wars where universities have banned plastic straws on campus so disabled people like myself struggle to drink in our in our spaces and the reason I mention this is because the rhetoric is we have a social responsibility to the environment. We have a social responsibility to not have a damaging impact on society and our world. We must really have social care and responsibility. But as soon as you say, okay, then divest from the arms trade, um, actually support people that you've impacted from the arms trade with those profits, such as you know, uh, international uh, disabled students getting into the country and staying in education, dedicated mental health services for the trauma caused by the military industrial complex. All of a sudden that becomes political. All of a sudden it's too far. That's too much social responsibility. We can ban straws and make your life harder as a disabled student, but we also won't support you from the trauma that we've created in your country or directly through the graduate recruitment schemes that often cause PTSD and other disabling factors. So my final point will be that it's not political to say that we have a social responsibility to society. It is political to distance yourself when it's no longer profitable. And as part of the work that we do, we have to consider the social model of disability. We have to consider the weaponization of disability and burden rhetoric as a tool of war, but also on our campuses and accessing education. And finally, that we don't just divest and campaign for divestment and campaign for uh, change to policies, but that we also campaign that those profits that they've been building for hundreds of years are used to directly support the individuals impacted by those actions, so that disabled people, particularly disabled people of colour from around the world that have been direct victims and who have survived the, the direct impact can access education like I was able to um, in a supported way, in, in, a, in a bespoke way. And, and I think that's a point that I'd like to finish on with the opening.